Hi. Paul Brochu, B R O C H U. Thank you. Uh, Nikki B. How do you spell? Nikki B. N I K K I B. B. Cool. Uh, Elizabeth Grunwald, G R U N E W A L D. Thank you. Ryan Hirsch, the No Pass guy. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. So, what do your notes say? My note? Oh, okay. Let me pull up a copy of it. Oh, just take Mr. Copy? President. Oh, he, like, keeps <laughs> he keeps a picture of well, no, I, I sent, I sent a copy have been arrested. Uh, the banksters cool. continue to destroy, destroy the economy mm. with impunity. Global economy. No, it didn't say. It just said. I know, but we changed, I want, it. we changed it from American to say just the economy. Economy with impunity. You must stop the assault on our First Amendment rights. So you guys, Your silence sends a message that, that police, police brutality, brutality is, is acceptable. Or is acceptable. So you guys got to practice it. I don't really was just like, okay. we didn't really. <laughs> My, we made the up nerves the in me had to memorize it. Uh, when, when did the plan to do this come together? Um, over the weekend, well, I actually started a Facebook event to uh, to protest. Well, with you guys, with in my brain, it started rolling over the weekend. And uh, I started a, a protest called uh, Occupy Obama, which was going to meet at Pulaski Park, which is right near the school. And we started trying to figure out where he was going to be um, doing the speech and just tried to organize something. And I got a lot of people interested. A lot of people interested that wanted to go protest Obama for their own reasons. And I was like, you know, we're actually just going there to protest the fact that uh, the Attorney General is trying to make a deal with the, the heads of banks who caused the financial collapse. And they're trying to, trying to just have them pay $20 billion to never investigate what happened that caused TARP. And that, that's, that's just crazy to me. Why would we not look into, basically, if there was any fraud, if there was anything that happened that was against the law? Why is it that when somebody, somebody goes on welfare, they lose their rights. They, so anyone can go. Anyone who's on welfare has to be subject to any type of investigation. Um, I forget what exactly that quote was, but they they're basically subject to search and seizure in their own home. They they get checked on. And but when a corporation gets welfare, we don't have any right to go look at. Wait, wait, what are they doing? We need to make sure they're doing against law. We need to make sure the corporation's not out smoking crack. You know, we need to make sure that they're not they're not they're not cooking meth in in their lab. You know, we we have to actually make sure that this isn't going to happen again. You know, and like I've got like uncles and stuff saying, you know, I'm a member of the one percent. I'm, I'm my, most people are not members of the one percent. And I just tell you know, we just want to figure out did people break the law? Probably. If they like did, Eric, we would like, like to see them face trial. Like we would like to see the them investigated. Yeah. You know? Why can't we get that? Yeah. What's stopping it? It's like, who are you to talk about peace? Uh, how'd, you, uh, how'd you get, well, how, how'd you end up there? Did someone was on like Democratic donor list or something? How'd you, how'd you find out Obama was coming? Um, I believe actually the school, the school newspaper uh -huh. uh, released something, I think, to the National What school? Uh, Manchester Central. <laughs> and, uh, how'd you get close enough to shake his hand? That's sometimes I difficult. was just up front. Um, we got let in, and just like there was enough space up front, I was only I was only behind one person um, when he was giving the speech. I was actually recording it from where I was, and it was I was already like I was, so I was already right up there, and he he list, he looked like he was listening to the first part, but then. Um, his supporters started to drown us out, and I was like, "Crap! You know, he's he's not even going to be able to hear the speech. He's going to be able to say, I never heard it.' So I was like, "Huh? Well, I guess he's shaking hands right now, so I could actually hand him a copy, so he knows what we were going to say." And I handed it to him. And, you know, his response again? Yeah, his response was, um, "Well, first I said." You know, Mr. President, I, like, I didn't just, it looks like I shoved the note in his hand. Yeah. But really, when he was coming down the line to shake hands, I was just like, hey, uh, Mr. President, I just want to say I'm sorry for interrupting your speech. And, you know, he looked at me, and I was like, and, you know, here's a copy of your mic check. And he grabbed it out of my hand, and he actually, he read it, and, like, he read it for, you know, five seconds, and he responded to it by saying, um, you know, I wouldn't exactly say I've been silent on the issue, but I admit that I could be more vocal. It was pretty simple. And quiet. I mean, maybe not silent, but he's been quiet. He, yeah. I mean. So again, what did he say? He said, uh, "I admit, I, I wouldn't exactly say I've been silent on the issue, but I admit I could be more vocal." And and I was like, 
It's a pretty good response, you know. Like if he actually if he actually does do it, I will be impressed. He will gain a little bit of points with me. Probably not enough for me to vote for him, but he will gain some points from me at least. But I uh, I mean I feel he handled it pretty graciously and people say people all these conspiracy nuts say like nobody can get that close to the president. Nobody can hand the president anything. Somebody Somebody tried to hand him a photograph before I even did it, so I didn't even know, think I was doing anything like out of the ordinary. I was just just this dumb guy, force gumping his way up to the president, going do 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 do. Here you go, Mr. President, and everybody's blowing it out of proportion, like it was just crazy, unprecedented thing. I'm pretty sure if you look back at history, somebody has handed the president something. <laughs> Even people are going, nobody can shake the hand of the president. What is he, the Pope? He doesn't live in a bubble. Lincoln used to shake so many hands that uh, he had trouble writing speeches. Because yeah, like, his hands were so sore. Were you involved with writing the note, or how did that all happen? Um, yeah, there was a group, probably like 15 people yeah. the night before. Yeah, a few of us. Um, were they we Occupy got... Manchester people? Uh, there yeah. were some people from other occupations in New Hampshire, um, but I would say the majority was Manchester people. Is that, is that right? Yeah, the, the, the majority of the people that participated, we have other people from Occupy New Hampshire. I think we had one or two Keen from Keene. Um, Cecilia was there. She's from Nashua, but she she comes up to the Manchester event. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd say Occupy New Hampshire. But by a bulk, a large, a large amount of us were from Manchester. Uh, just because it's hard to uh, coordinate with the people up from Conway. What was the process? Did you do it through a GA? Uh, yeah, we basically did a GA. We agreed on the wording, and then we practiced a few times in yeah, a, a big area that had a high ceilings to get an idea of how yeah. loud we were. Everybody kind of brought up more specific points, and then uh, uh, we have some very... eloquent speakers in the group. Like we have a poet, Matthew Richards, um, and he helped with with some of it. Um, I mean, everybody participated to some extent. There was a lot of editing, because it was- yeah, There was a last minute change. There was a last minute change to take yeah. out. Yeah, that's well, it. And yeah, add, we wanted to take and out And add there. with impunity, because, uh, you know, because the banksters are not getting prosecuted or, or investigated. Yeah, and they're fucking up other economies besides the United States. They, yeah, they are, they are screwing the rest of us and not changing their ways. I think, and you know what? I see occupations as it's time for an intervention, guys. It's an extension of the Arab Spring, right? Yes. Supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, I, would, giant, I, wouldn't, bottom. I wouldn't say but, that. I mean, the the Arab countries are really fighting a really hard battle. Yeah. We we need to win our battle, though, for them to really be able to win their battles because our government interferes with everything in the world. Yeah. And if we can't if we can't get them to stop meddling with everybody, they don't even stand a chance over there. What's your name again, and where? What town are you from? Uh, Elizabeth Grunwald, and I'm from Merrimack, New Hampshire. Great. My name's Paul Brochu from Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, Nikki from Pelham. Ryan from Pelham, born and raised. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. What was your name again? My name's John. John? Yep. Do you have a